Okie dokie. <clears throat> Let me find the thingy with the agenda thingy. There it is. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, hopefully, those of you in the States had a nice Thanksgiving break. Um, and it's good to be back after a few weeks' hiatus for me. Um, so, on today's uh, agenda, we've got uh, New York Hackfest update from Todd. Uh, um, uh, a, a note on the white paper working group um, that Hart Montgomery is now the work group chair, elected I think unanimously by the other members of the t of the working group. So I'd like to thank Mick for uh, I'm sorry for uh, David rather for his um, for all of his work and um, uh, and uh, and wish uh, Hart some some good luck. And that actually triggers. Um, the, the last topic, which is a working group charter discussion, not just for the white paper working group, but I think for all of them, um, that Mick will, uh, um, will, will, will let, Mick will let you, if you're on, open up. Uh, if not, I'll try and vouch for you. Um, <clears throat> we have had uh, ongoing discussion uh, about the project incubation exit criteria, and I'd like to get that to a vote. and. Um, and we have, uh, I think on the 10th, there was a review by Bawa of Project Cello and the proposed incubation of that new project. And so we need a vote for that. And uh, if Brian is on, I think we should get an update on the project of the working group. So any other, um, any other topics for the agenda? Somebody's typing Who's on the phone. Okay, thank you. Uh, if not, okay, Todd, I'll let you pick it up with the a reminder of the Hackfest and. Uh... Yep, uh, sure thing. Uh, so if you have not already registered for the Hackfest, please do so ASAP. Uh, as of right now, we have 77 registered. Uh, we're, we're continuing to see that climb. Uh, we will. Uh, hit a max of 100, and we will uh, uh, stop registration at that point. So uh, please get that done uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and then the other thing in the agenda that went out, we have a uh, draft agenda for the Hackfest. I'm copying both of these things into the chat window. Uh, if there's topics that you want to see uh, get discussed, or if there's things that you want to present on, please drop it in there in the proposed agenda item. Uh, if you have a work group that's looking to hold some sort of session, please get that slotted in. Uh, otherwise, like all the previous Hackfests, we will run this in on conference format, spending the first you know 30 minutes or so mapping out the two days uh, based on the groups that's, group that's there and, and the variety of interests. Any questions on that before we move on? No, but I, I, I would like to get a sense of... Um, so I know that Richard. I think you're going to be there, right? And um, I I believe that. Um, yeah, I'm there. Uh, I, I believe Dan, you're coming Tuesday, right? Yeah, maybe that's Dan. correct. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if we could, you know, think about maybe having a session that just sort of talked about, you know, where do we go from here. Um, on Tuesday with the various top level, um, uh, you know, fabric, you know, DLT, whatever you want to call them, platform projects, and the potential of Corda, obviously. I, I, I'd like to have a conversation that sort of talks about, you know, what do we think, where do we think we want to go from this? Do we want to think about consolidation at all? Do we want to think about component swapping? Uh, you know, do we want to think about um, you know, sharing, you know, functionality and so forth. I, I think it'd be worthwhile to have, you know, maybe 90 minutes to, to sort of think about where we go from here with the projects that we have and, uh, um, and you know, explore different ideas about how we might be working a little bit more collaboratively. Um, so I'd like to add that to the schedule on Tuesday if there's agree that that's worthwhile. I mean, if, if people think it's too soon to have that, you know, we can we can put it off, but I think having it face-to-face -face would be better than having it on a call. 
So I'd, I'd be up for that. I think, I mean, we may not be able to reach any immediate conclusions, but yeah, right. I'd, um, I'd love that. So I mean, we've got, I mean, I won't, I won't rehearse it now, but we've got, you know, there's, there's various things we've written that we think might be reusable by others, and, um, and there's probably more we should be doing to look at what's in, in other code bases, but, but yeah, I'll be up for that. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll see if I can find a 90-minute spot in here. Okay, thanks. Any other? Hi. I just joined. Oh, hi, Nick. Hey, Chris. Sorry, I'm anything else. Internet. If not, just at home. Okay. Um, if not, then uh, I guess next up would be the incubation exit criteria um, discussion. And Todd, could you paste the link in just for everybody? Sure thing. I always want to click on the link. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Thanks. <clears throat> so uh, I, I wasn't there on the 10th, um, but I believe, in, and again, uh, others can weigh in and just sort of um, agree if I'm capturing this correctly, but the, the way that I understood it, and I, I meant to update this, but I haven't um, had a chance to as I've been traveling, but um, um, the, 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 what, what I took away from listening to the recording of the meeting on the 10th and reading the minutes was that um, the, re the requirements as stated um, for the minimum requirements um, seemed about right and that when we got into the additional requirements, that that was, you know, those were deemed basically, you know, more about the, the maturity of the product, not the project. And so they didn't, I mean, they're important. Obviously, we want to make, you know, we want to factor those in. We want to capture them and, and not lose sight of them. But by the same token, they aren't really relevant to exiting incubation from a project perspective. So... Um, if, if, if everybody is in rough agreement with that, then what I would propose is that we take a vote on the exit criteria as written um, and stop at just before additional requirements and pay, basically take that, st that section out and just uh, record it someplace else in the wiki for um, consideration of, you know, sort of going to general availability or whatever we want to call the uh, formal release of a project, a product rather, or, you know, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Have I captured okay. that correctly? Yeah, I think this would be a good if you leave out the additional requirements, then I don't really see a big difference between incubation and an exit. So, what does it really make sense then? I'm sorry, Tomas. There was a little bit of static in the beginning. You're saying if we eliminate if additional if eliminate requirements, the then additional, not yeah. If you eliminate the additional requirements, then uh, it is. Uh, much more left than what is actually being put into place for incubation. I'm, I'm sorry, Tomas, there was like a feedback thing in the middle of what you were saying. <laughs> I didn't hear it again. If I eliminate the additional requirements, then there's not much different than what? Than incubation. For incubation. Yeah, I think what Thomas is talking about is what is the difference between, you know, entering incubation, what is required to enter incubation, and what is required to exit incubation? I typed. Well, so the requirement for incubation is basically described 
in the life cycle document where you know you just have to have a proposal with a clear description a well-defined scope some resources identified maintainers and to have it be vendor neutral I mean there's a pretty low bar <laughs> um, I talk, I talk. So this is Lennon so I just joined uh, yeah the key word you mentioned there one of the key words is scope and we decided that scope as given for what's being developed is sufficient to get out to, to exit information. If we look, if we look at the additional requirements versus the um, the existing requirements that are part of the overall solution, okay, that's enabled by the existing solution. Uh, do we can we vote on the scope to 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 deem that complete um, to exit? Um, Incubation. For example, we may find that looking at the existing requirements, there might be um, a very important gap that needs to be addressed and filled. So that's the sort of um, sort of session I would do, and say, you know what, we do have a well-rounded scope, and at the point we are, we should really exit incubation. Just some consideration here. Um, okay, so <clears throat> maybe I'm maybe maybe we're not ready for this. I, I thought we were, but and maybe I misunderstood what I heard in the discussion. Um, but then again, Todd, I'm very new to the process. I've only just recently joined the team, so it's going to be a consensus as to whether yeah. we're at that point that we all agree we should exit incubation. But to do that, we need to look at the additional requirements and ensure that the scope has, is, is the fit in of a solution that can exit incubation. Oh, okay. So, and again, let me see if I can capture this. I mean, the, to, there's to, a distinction to... between the project and the product. And what I'm and again, I'm not talking about a product in terms of something you sell, but, but as much as the product is the output of a project. A project is the collection of individuals working collaboratively on um, a product, and the function of incubating a project is to to be able to essentially pull together a team, get to the point where <clears throat> The, the team basically is operating within the norms of what we describe in this document here in terms of their, you know, their GitHub or Garrett as the case may be has been created. Um, they have mailing lists, they're using them effectively, they have a continuous integration pipeline, you know, they've got, you know, adequate test coverage, they, you know, they're, they're doing documentation that essentially we're looking for the maturity of the project in terms of do they know what they're doing and are they doing it right or is it a complete dysfunction? Um, and, and so that's what incubation is really all about. Incubation is about pulling together and growing a diverse community of contributors and collaborators um, working on a thing. Um, now, the maturity of the thing, the product, is an independent thing from incubation. It has nothing to do I mean, you know, you, you could bring something in that's fully baked, but it still has to go through incubation to demonstrate that the project team, the individuals that are working on it, are, you know, operating in the mode that we expect of a project within the Hyperledger um, community. And that it's a different discussion about whether or not something is ready to be anointed as 1.0 um, and so forth. Um, and so, again, uh, that that's what I thought I heard on the previous call, and so I just want to make sure so, that we're all on that same page. 
<laughs> yeah, so Todd, it's just for some clarification. What would you consider the purpose, the purpose of scope as in a charter for the project? And that also applies now to intubation here at the project. What is the purpose of scope in that um, intubation, you might say, project? Or in the hyperlevel thought project? There must be some significance regarding scope. Is it defined to the point that we can say, yes, we can get out of, uh, of, of intubation? And that's the only concern I have. Have we done that due diligence? I, I agree with what uh, Chris elaborated there. The, the additional requirements to me are very much the requirements for maturity of a product at the point where we want to say that, you know, we are releasing one no, and we have to have these criteria seemingly suitable, um, but from, for incubator to exit for, for a project to exit incubators, we, demonst we have to demonstrate that, that we get the process down, the process of developing the project within our community. And it seems to me that you know, the minimum requirements section define just that. Um, so I, I would agree with the minimum requirements, but not the additional requirements. Uh, that's a very good point. So I think if that's the case, the scope, the scope should cover just the minimum requirements. As long as we agree as a team, this is the point for that we've all agreed that yes, the, the, the minimum requirements constitutes the scope of what we need to do or fulfill to exit incubation. I, I, and I think that's what I'm, I'm trying to establish. And, but then Tomas so said he wasn't clear, and, and maybe I misunderstood you, Tomas, but then you were saying that what we've described here, you, you aren't really sure of what the distinction between entering and exiting incubation is. Um, well, uh to be able to enter incubation, you expect uh, what is enumerated as a minimum artifact, a minimum requirement. So, um, <clears throat> besides building the community, what else happens during incubation? No, but uh, Thomas, I don't think that's accurate. For instance, sufficient test coverage, I don't think we have that as a requirement to get into incubation, right? So I think if you put the two side by side, you'd find that this one goes further. Yeah, it goes it goes a lot further. I mean, legal actually, you know, the the code entering needs to be Apache license as well. That's actually um, uh, you know I I think you know, but exiting obviously we need to be a little bit more particular about making sure that everything is uh, appropriately licensed. So that needs a, a scan or at least a, um, a desk check. Um, <clears throat> you know, the test coverage, the documentation, the, you know, the alignment, all those kinds of things, I think, are determined based on the output, whereas we've incubated things that had no code at all. Like we incubated the Python SDK. We incubated the, blo uh, the, uh, the blockchain explorer. We incubated, um, uh, you know, uh, some of the projects that we've uh, approved didn't really have any or had minimal code documentation testing and so forth and it was really based on what they described that they wanted to be building um, and how they articulated the scope of that activity that we agreed to accept it in, into incubation and then it's a function of them building a community of develop a diverse community of developers getting the process and place and you know using the tools effectively building continuous integration and so forth that are required to exit incubation so hopefully so, Todd, Todd, everything you said here constitutes high level requirements that are part of the scope so if if we have agreed that 
what we've done in terms of the minimum requirements that you very well elaborated on constitutes a complete scope for exit and incubation, I think that probably will get us to that point. I don't think this has anything really to do with scope and requirements. I think that's a very different set of things that we haven't talked about before in this context. Um, I think what we've been consistent about in these discussions is what's the maturity of the contributors, the maturity of the team uh, rather behind the project. And if we need to add more specificity to that in the document, then maybe uh, somebody can propose that. Otherwise, as written, uh, it seems sufficient uh, unless somebody can suggest some uh, harms or, or risks of, of not having it uh, more specific in, in terms of those maturity levels. Yeah, I agree with Dan on that one. I mean, in fact, you search for scope. There is nothing mentioning a scope in there. I, I, you know, Chris, I would like to us to kind of get back. I, I feel like we have derailed a little bit. I mean, the status of the document is that we have these two sets of requirements because we already had these kind of discussions early on when we were trying to establish these exit criteria, and you know what we ended up with is these two lists with the idea, I mean, at least that's what I tried to convey in the text, is that the first one is the thing that we all agree we must have for all projects that want to exit incubation. And then there was this notion that, well, in some projects, the very goal of the project might be to, you know, set a certain goal in performance, for instance. And and it would then make sense, you know, to in, to, to, to get out of incubation unless you have established an, a structure, an infrastructure to, to get to, to measure, you know, that goal, whether you're reaching that goal or not. It doesn't mean you've you meet it already, otherwise you'd be out of active probably by then. But, you know, and so we said, okay, there's a bunch of other criteria that might be defined. And I think the text says these would be defined on the, at the onset of the project. So, and you know, by default, my assumption is these additional requirements do not apply. They are like, you know, this is up for consideration. When people get into a project, they may define their own re extra additional requirements. And those were just listed as examples of things that might show up in that list. So last week, you were in there, but Brian was, we, we started having discussion, you know, on the security aspect. and. Uh, you know, the point was made rightfully that coverage is not the right measurement for security or ensuring security. And so that led to a discussion and then Brian said, you know what, this whole additional requirement section shouldn't be there. And we kind of said, yeah, maybe you're right. And I pointed out, I say, wait, this is kind of a compromise that we have here. So if you remove that list from this document, you need to make sure you don't completely lose it and we probably have to have it somewhere else. And so that's where we are. And I'm afraid that we're kind of going in circle now between people who want to rather have more and people who rather have less. And, you know, I think maybe what we have is kind of like uh, the right compromise. And if not, I think it's possible technically to move out the additional requirements to some of the documents that would expand on, you know, uh, and maybe it, it cannot be mandatory, but it can be like, you know, the kind of recommended requirements that project yeah. might take into consideration. This is Brian. Can I make two specific proposals? Because I, 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 you know, definitely, the, you're, you are correct, are not in, in characterizing both the conversation when we last talked as well as the one on the 10th. Um, and I'm also looking at heart female from the 11th uh, as well, which I know Chris responded to. But um, I think what we're all converging on is uh, some degree of comfort uh, with saying that the additional requirements should simply be rephrased, additional consideration. And we suggest projects may want to look at this, uh, uh, these, these ideas. And at some point, it may make sense to move those out into something else that is more about, you know, things that projects want to be thinking about throughout their lifespan. Um, and certainly, as they, as the, as the, uh, may, maybe we think about that in the um, uh, project life, product life cycle, you know, and, and the naming convention kind of doc. But, but getting back, rename the specific proposal I would make. Rename this section additional consideration. 
um, and then I've got a second proposal, but first let me just set that out there, see what people think. So this would you say just so before I drop that? Because that, I think I don't know if you can yeah, before that, I drop that, it. That that right. kind of makes I'm oh, sorry, I was sort of talking across each other, Chris. That kind of makes sense to me. I mean, because if you look at one of them, you know, sufficient real world usage, I think certainly in some domains or some industries, um, you won't see much real world usage until a project has graduated. You, know, you can't simultaneously be in incubation and be production ready. Um, exactly. Even though I know we, even even though we need to distinguish, we do want to distinguish between team and project maturity and product maturity. Right. Uh, but at the same time, there has to be some view as to whether the thing is is is, is vaguely credible or not. So that, that that kind of works for me. I know it sounds like a fudge, but it, it works for me. Okay. So I've I've actually made that change, um, and Brian, I I think that's a a good compromise. Okay. Um, and so, I, if you refresh the page, if you're looking at it, um, I've done that. I made that change, and uh, but now, Brian, I think you said you had another proposal. Yeah, because there were some concerns about security, code scanning, that sort of thing. So, my second proposal would be um, that the project aim to implement the um, the, uh, the core infrastructure initiatives badge for um, uh, secure processes. Um, and uh, if I can direct people's attention, I, I'm not on WebEx, but if you go to coreinfrastructure.org, um, this is a Linux Foundation collaborative project. Uh, it's the one that funds the OpenSSL development. One of their programs is a badging program to basically establish that you know a project has achieved a best practices badge around being able to take you know security notices and treat them separately from your other bugs, for example. Um, uh, and so, uh, and maybe this is something we can defer a week to look at later. Um, well, what, and moving forward on the first proposal, uh, but <clears throat> if we're what, trying to evaluate how well this team is able to respond, um, well, proactively look for security issues and then respond when there is one, then the badge is the only system I know of, or the only uh, thing out there in the open source space that is a is a benchmark for measuring that. Uh, as an attribute of the team, not of the product. Um, that that certainly seems reasonable to me. How would so badge program get your badge? There's only one badge. Only one threshold. Yeah. And you just and have to answer to, it the question. And that and that's basically having the processes in place to be able to accept security, critical vulnerabilities, and so forth offline. Work with them and then use the appropriate notification processes to roll them back out to the community. Is that essentially what that's saying? Yes. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, um, hi, Chris. This is Murali from DTCC. One of the feedback I do want to add, I like the idea of the badge, um, but I think it's very important that we be very objective. Uh, I'm good with the uh, minimum requirements, but these have to be implemented or tied to, um, you know, we should tie it to some objective metrics, right? Otherwise, this this may not mean a whole lot. You know, what is sufficient testing? What is sufficient user documentation? What is continuous setting up for continuous integration? Unless you're objective, and we can start with some minimal, uh, you know, bar in terms of implementing it, and we keep raising the bar or have the badges, but it should be driven more objectively rather than it's it's a good starting point, but I think we should keep uh, keep the implementation and, and objectivity in mind. So how about we defer that second proposal till later um, and uh, get agreement on this document as it stands um, with that as a potential addendum later. And we can go back and review the criteria. They are more extensive than just a, re a reporting process. Um, I was yeah. just looking that up and I cut and pasted the criteria into the chat window for the for GoToMeeting. I'll send it around to the TSC mailing list as well. So I think deferring that so we can all review that and see what what it would take, but but it's designed to to be self, a self attestation uh, about uh, as well. So it's kind of how how strict do we want to be about it? Um, but we should be we should try to be consistent. Yeah, 
is, is the thing. Uh, Brian, it's Vipin. Um, I read over the uh, some of the criteria, and they are not vague. They are, you know, many of them are very specific, uh, and uh, it seems like a good idea what you proposed. But of course, people need uh, additional time for to absorb that these criteria. I agree with you completely. So. Yeah, so I, I tend to agree. I think you know maybe the one, um, <clears throat> you know, the one that you could potentially put some sort of objective measure around would be test coverage. But you know, I think we actually had this discussion in the past about not putting some sort of percentage or something because uh, again, we're talking about the maturity of the project, not the product. And so I think what we're looking, what we said that we were looking for, is a you know, and, and that's when in the clarity be, be below it is the project must include a comprehensive unit and integration test suite, document its coverage, and, you know, provide potentially additional performance and scale test capability as being a desirable thing. Um, it's not really saying that it has to have a certain threshold, but it is saying that you have to be able to measure it. And it's saying that you need unit and integration test coverage. And obviously, I think there's security and performance and pen testing, various other things that I think from a product maturity perspective you want to see. But, you know, again, what we're talking about here is the maturity of the project, which is really the individuals that are working on it, and are they doing the things that we desire to see them do? And, and so in this regard, I think the, these things are describing the things we'd like to see them do and not a measure of what they have done. Is that, uh, does that make sense? Well, in, in the cryptography section, for example, um, they, they say things that are very specific. Um, so that would be a good thing to have. I mean, I don't know whether this, I mean, since the badging cri criteria are very generic for all projects, um, I don't know how they, sh you know, and since they are an open source initiative, they are obviously not going to have different badging criteria for different uh, different sites of no, the project. No, no, okay. I, I, yeah. again, I think there's a little bit of confusion here. So, so, so in, in the context of the badge, I think the badging is you're basically going through and answering, do you have these things? And what Brian was describing, I haven't done it. I, I will do it. Um, and I, I think it makes sense to add something like this. Um, would be, do we have a process in place for being able to handle um, security, uh, in, 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 you know, incident reporting and so forth, um, so that you're not freaking people out, but, but that you are doing due diligence and in, in managing the uh, incidents, doing the remediation, and then, you know, effectively communicating this back um, to the community and, and applying the patches and so forth so that um, you aren't putting people, you're not, you're not exposing people who are, who may be using the software um, unnecessarily. And I think that's, Brian, what you're getting at, is to be able to answer the question that you have those things in place. And I'd be happy to add that. I think that's something that's objective um, that, we, that we could add. But, but then I think, Vipin, what you're referring to is the additional considerations, which is, I think, what everybody was getting hung up on in terms of of you know scale and 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 all those things below those things possibly do need you know because it's got like a maximum per you know transactions per second and so on and so forth those things I think maybe I would agree that if we were using those as a measure of is the product you know ready for prime time uh, much less per you know production usage that I would want to be able to measure those kinds of things and that maybe we do need to be looking at potentially having an objective set of criteria that we're using to measure um, uh, you know, whether or not something is, is baked yet. Um, which is again why I, th you know, I was initially considering just dropping that whole last section um, simply because it was confusing. But again, the additional considerations I think is a good Compromise because while we might be considering these things, it's not necessarily that we're looking to actually objectively measure them as a specific set of criteria that we're looking for to grant a, a request to exit incubation. 
So, well, Chris, so, just a, um, a, a comment on that. that when I read the, yeah. the additional considerations, and, and I like the section in principle precisely because it's not requirements, I was looking at this more as um, can we use this document as a tool to help projects um, articulate what they're about more clearly? Um, and thinking about, you know, I, I'm not in favor of somebody saying, you know, there has to be a minimum transactions per second standard, right? But, but a given project should be able to say, hey, you know, we're about high performance transactions. We should hold ourselves accountable to a particular criteria. And, and I would suggest a similar kind of thing about, about security. We, we need to encourage um, appropriateness. But the requirements for something like Navigator are likely to be radically different than the ones for um, Fabric or Aroha or, or Sawtooth. Um, yeah. right. I agree. So I, mean, I don't I, think it's a one-size-fits-all criteria. Yeah, I guess, I, I guess what I, I'm saying I, I, is, is it, it should not be a, a prescriptive, you know, it should not be like limit, limiting. It should be like uh, some kind of considerations. In fact, that was a whole... Um, that was the whole spirit in which we started out this, uh, you know, all these projects that people would look at what uh, what each project has done. And then if they want to use it, they will use that as a, a guideline in order to actually use it in, instead of uh, just saying, oh, this has to pass the threshold in order to be released into uh, as a project. I, I agree with it leaving it as additional considerations, plus having some um, other metrics, whatever you can release on the project will uh, will force people to, uh, you know, basically come out with something, some kind of metrics on, on their particular project. And then uh, the adoption will depend on that particular, uh, you know, like output rather than somebody saying, no, we cannot do this. You cannot release it into uh, production without or produ or whatever, exit uh, incubation without passing these uh, criteria. I totally agree with you, Mick. And I think we are all sort of in the same uh, uh, page when it comes to that. We don't want any hard criteria because not every project is the same. So, Chris, I hear a lot of support for this document with the modification that you made with the additional considerations. Is it time to just vote on it and put it to bed and move on? I'd, I'd be happy with that, Mick. <laughs> so I suggest, Todd, you want to maybe call a roll? And I mean, again, if people are not comfortable yet, then please vote no and say we need more time and more consideration. But I, I think I agree, Mick. I think we're kind of... Yeah, and can, can you just be clear then on um, that it's it's just the, the document as you've updated it today and this discussion about badges is, just, is a separate thing for later discussion? It's, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Um, okay, we'll run through the list quickly then. Uh, Arnaud? Yes. Finn? Yes. Finn. All right. Uh, Chris? Yep. Dan? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mick? Yes. Morali? Yes. Richard? I think he had a drop. Yep, okay. Uh, Sheehan? Yes. And Tamash? Yes. All right, so that's unanimous. Thank you. And I'll start a conversation cool. thread about the uh, security badge on the TSC list. That that sounds good, Brian. And uh, I, again, I think that's a good idea. But I, I think and Mick is right. We should probably just sort of get this done and move on. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, next up is um, I lost my placeholder here. Uh, next up is uh, the uh, cello proposal that Bauha went over. Um, there was a little bit of discussion, I think, on the mailing list. I weighed in when I got back from vacation, um, and 
And so I think we left it as of the previous call that we would take a vote today. So um, I didn't see any other discussion on the list. So I would suggest that we just put the cello proposal to vote. Well, I think anybody some wants some of the well, I think some of the verbal. Yes, yeah, I think some of the verbal discussion we'd had during the proposal was whether uh, cello would have. Um, better chance of success being merged in with the Explore project um, rather than having it be a, an independent project. And so that's ah, kind of what okay. we're yeah, sitting on things. Oh, okay. So a few people were going to go away and, and take a look at things and, and see what they thought of that. And I think the Explore working group or, or project team might have had some discussions or, or I was left with the impression that they were going to. Um, uh, some of the folks that that I interact with that, that work on that team took a look, and, and that seemed to be the direction that that they were leaning towards. Ah, okay. I didn't catch that subtlety, and I apologize. Um, if that's the case, then uh, I didn't see the other discussion on on a mailing list, and maybe I was looking the wrong places. Um, yeah, I, I don't is know. Is there anybody from the? It's in a, I think it was more verbal. It, it wasn't. That wasn't captured in the meeting notes uh, on uh, um, uh, in, uh, on the eleventh, posted on the eleventh from the November tenth conversation, which I think was our last one. Yeah, that's why I was saying I didn't. I didn't catch that. So, um, so thanks, Dan, for bringing that up. And if that's the case, is there anybody from that? working group that uh, or from that project rather that can share with us what they discussed so hi um, yeah this is Pandra from GDCC uh, we actually wanted to talk to um, Bo about the cello project and uh, the because of the synergies that are present between the Explorer as well as the cello project but because we were busy with the SDK common SDK spec uh, we didn't take that discussion further um, um, so I think uh, I think that we are on that same uh, idea that you know both have uh, since both are uh, both have a lot of commonality maybe we should uh, find a common place for them to be hosted together okay. but it's not yet finalized you know we haven't hit, uh, completely it's not finalized because yeah just people are working on other things okay that is fair enough yeah and in 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 that light then what I would propose is that we defer this until that conversation can be had. Um, does everybody agree with that, or anybody disagree with that? Because it sounds to me like maybe not all the people need to have that conversation around this call. And in which case, I think um, we should just try and, and work this offline and come back when we've had that conversation. I'm not hearing any. Uh, Chris. Chris, this is Bahua, and uh, I guess we, if we have time today, we can just make the conversation uh, for the whether we, uh, how we can uh, integrate uh, like Shallow with uh, Blockchain Explorer. And uh, actually, uh, there are also other uh, suggestions uh, from my side, uh, like in the proposal. Some guys uh, from Huawei also uh, uh, suggest uh, how to uh, let uh, to make Celo uh, support uh, the uh, OpenStack uh, platform as the underlying uh, platform. Uh, I, I, I guess the, those are uh, also very good questions, and we can um, talk, uh, discuss them uh, here and uh, to uh, arise uh, broader suggestions. How do you think? Uh, well, so Bawa, I, I don't mind having that conversation now, but I think the the point that I was on is I'm not sure all the people that need to be having that conversation are on this call. And so okay. I think probably the best thing to do would be now that the SDK is settled down a bit and we're in the process of looking at that um, uh, just from a review perspective that maybe we should just pick this discussion up, put it on to uh, you know, either the, the technical discuss list um, or the TSC list and uh, mailing list or in the forum and 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 uh, and start having that conversation um, okay 
I, that would be my preference at this point. And then if we need to have a, a call, we can certainly, uh, you know, arrange for something. Uh, or we can maybe even have a conversation next week when we're all together. Um, but um, again, I, sure. I, don't, I, don't think, sure. I don't think all the right people are on. And I, I think it would be unfortunate to have the discussion and then have to go back and revisit it because somebody missed it. So th that would be my proposal is that we just sort of take this offline, put it on the mailing list, and if we need to pull together a call, um, I'm sure that Todd and, and Brian can help facilitate that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my session is like next week we can discuss because we'll be there um, in New York City. It'll be much easier, I think, yeah. face and to Bawa, face. Bawa, were, you... Bawa, were you coming to New York? Uh, I hope not for this time. Okay. Okay. But maybe we can bring yeah, you know we, we, can, meet, we can maybe arrange it. We can have a call. Yeah, okay. we may talk through a call. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. And apologies for not catching that bit. Um, uh, so the final topic is the China Technical Working Group. Um, Brian, I think you were on the hook for uh, like a charter or something. Right. So I, I and and I think there's actually two more topics. So I'll try to be, uh, or well, at least one more after me. So I'll try to be efficient. Um, but the. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, given given the positive response, uh, I really I, I just did a little bit of wordsmithing on on the proposal from a few weeks ago and uh, created a, a wiki page for it with a couple of to be determined items to put in in terms of links to <clears throat> the conversation uh, tool that they decide to use, whether that's to the the WeChat page or to some other place, um, uh, that sort of thing. But, uh, and then, uh, but really just reframed um, what I'd said before and proposed three specific individuals as our working group uh, to serve as this bridge between uh, uh, China and, and the TSC. So I um, thought it'd be uh, worth uh, proposing. And two of those three uh, have accepted, Bawa and Victor. Um, Charles had, had mentioned this before, so I'm pretty sure he'll say yes. Um, uh, uh, I just hadn't hadn't gotten confirmation from him yet, but I I feel like we could probably take a vote on this, adopt it. If if he needs to change, I can come back and propose another name. Um, and uh, and then we revisit that in uh, six months. Okay, so um, let me just sort of to recap. So so the governance would be that the TSC would name the 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 chairs or the the, the leads and and. We revisit that every six months. Uh, and where was the proposal? Did I miss a, an email? I sent an email to the TSC mailing list a couple of hours ago. Oh, and I've been offline all day, so that's probably why I didn't see it. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you go, just look earlier from today, five or six hours ago. And it was in reply to my original thread. So if you're using a threaded mail reader, it might have blended it in with uh, with others. Problem is in my threaded mail reader when I search for people and it's coming from a list, it doesn't search right. Um, <clears throat> you can't just sort by date. Uh, I have way too much email. On the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, technical work. I don't see the note. I, I, oh, for oh, to the te the te technical. Yeah, I sent it to the PSC mailing list, and it's called the subject line is technical working group, comma China. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. That's why. Okay, never mind. I have too many mailing things. Got sure. it. All right, I see it now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the proposal then would be that, uh, based on the charter, which looked good, um, that we would take a vote then on naming these three. 
Yeah, uh, uh, on approving, uh, yeah, approving the charter and naming those three. Okay. Um, that sounds like a a plan to me. So, um, Todd, you want to take a roll? Everybody clear on the proposal? So the proposal is accept the charter is written and um, accept the three nominees, Bawa, Charles, and Victor, um, as the initial leads of the China Working Group. So, Todd? All right. Um, okay, running through uh, Arno. Yes. Biden. Yes. Chris? Yep. Dan? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mick? Yes. Morali? Yes. Shihan? Yes. And Tomash? Yes. All right, great. That passes unanimously. Great, then I'll, I'll go in and I'll right, and then with, you with, with those names and uh, get this rolling. Awesome. Thanks, Brian, for driving that. Um, and thanks to the three, uh, congratulations, I should say, to the three uh, chairs. So, um, co-chairs, so the, the final topic is, um, Mick, um, you, you sent, I think it was a private note to me and, and, and Brian and, and Todd, but maybe you want to sort of recap your um, your uh, uh, your point on the sort of the need potentially to have formal charters for these various working groups so that we have clear direction as to what we expect of them and so forth. Do you want to maybe recap that for the team? Sure. Yeah, so, uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll say just in the context of the white paper working group, um, um, you know, we've been working on the white paper for, well, on the order of 10 months now. Um, <clears throat> we've had uh, more or less two complete drafts. Um, and in each case, uh, when we brought the white paper back, um, there's been such an incredible diversity of opinions about what needed to go into it that um, we kind of threw up our hands like, okay, you know, how can we possibly be successful in this? Um, and one of the things that seems pretty clear that's come out of that is that um, it's very difficult um, for a working group, I'll talk from the working group side, but I'll talk about the other side as well. It's very difficult from the working group side um, to make progress when we are trying <clears throat> to um, uh, meet the requirements of absolutely everybody who's out there, meet every requirement of everyone who's out there. And so for the white paper working group, for example, I know the thing that, that Hart is driving right now is um, to get clarity on an agreement on a specific outline. So the charter becomes, of that group becomes, write this paper with this outline. Um, because in that sense, that gives us, us as working group participants a chance to be successful um, and actually completing the delivery of something that meets um, an agreed upon set of requirements. The flip side of this is um, from, from the foundation and technical steering committee perspective is it's not obvious to me what's going on or what the deliverables are or what the outcome, expected outcome is of any of these working groups. And as a result, it feels like it's just another meeting on, on our weekly schedule um, uh, that we have to participate in without having any clear set of deliverables. For our projects, we have required a proposal with a clear set of deliverables, um, a clear scope, um, and participants. Um, we have not held the working groups to the same kind of rigor. Um, and, and yes, I understand, you know, this is an open source community and, and we all have to, many of us are doing this voluntarily. Um, and at the same time, for us to feel a sense of progress and purpose in those working groups, both from those who are trying to consume the output from it and from those who are participating, having a little bit of clarity around what the expectations are. Um, what the outcomes are and what the deliverables are would make life a lot easier for both sides. Um, that's just uh, yeah, um, observation in working uh, and, and 
you know, Ram, I don't know if Ram's on the phone today, but Ram could talk about um, uh, similar kind of things in the architecture working group where we've had fantastic yeah. discussions, right? And and I think both architects, both of the, the, the fabrics have been influenced by the architecture group discussions. We've had similar good discussions in identity, but there isn't an end um, in what we're doing. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, right. It just it feels like we need more of the kind of charters that Brian wrote for the uh, TSC. So, I, I, you know, I want to thank you for for bringing that up. I, I I tend to agree that if we actually sort of had formal charters for the working groups, that that would help derive a certain amount of focus. I know that there's been. Um, certainly, and, and it was commented in the chat there that you know the other groups have these you know essentially the same issue whether it's architecture identity, um, and and uh, you know probably the one that is probably the clearest is requirements because we all sort of know what, and understand what requirements and use cases are all about. But of course, you know knowing when they're done is it also a different thing. So I actually tend to agree. I think it actually would probably be useful if the the working groups could. Um, could document what their, uh, you know, what what they were all about. Um, you know, it, you know, the, the 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 you know, we we started these things, and and uh, you know, it was largely, you know, somebody saying, hey, we should get together and we should talk about architectures, and you know, and so that you know, I, I let Rom sort of drive that. I think that's a good thing. Um, I, I do think though that, you know, maybe it's time that we did get a little bit more. Um, rigor around some of these things and I think actually having a charter would be a good thing and so <clears throat> maybe the thing that we do is that um, you know we should sort of let the groups go back and drive a short process of bringing forward a charter let's say by um, I know it's you know we're in the holiday season here and it's supposed to be but maybe if we can you know sort of request that for the beginning of January, let's say, um, no later, um, to, to bring forward a charter and we can have that discussion and, and amongst the, the, the TSC and, and with the members of the working groups um, and and then, you know, leverage that going forward and if people need to change the scope of their charter, they can do so. Uh, but then I think you're right. I think it would help people understand what it was uh, that they were uh, expecting to be doing and you know how to declare victory and um, uh, you know and it would also give people an understanding of what you know what each of these things was so I, I think that's really a good idea Mick thank you and Todd this is Len if I'm say I, I certainly agree with both of you I mean it certainly would add the clarity uh, in terms of understanding the purpose of each of the working groups because a charter must have scope and the scope defined the areas of focus, whether they be criteria or high-level requirements or, 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 or input or exit strategy. So that, that is certainly a good thing to have. So I'm very happy with, uh, we all agree that, that should, that's a good standard approach we have to adopt with all the working groups. Okay. This is Arno. I've got right. to run, so, but I'm, I'm I fully gonna... agree. Yeah, I think we all have to run. We're, we're just past the, uh, the witching hour here. Um, so, so I'd like to thank everybody again, and um, so, so um, uh, Todd, just uh, could we put in the actions that each of the work groups is expected to pull together um, a, a draft charter and present it to the TSC before, um, well, let's say, before the second week of January. Great, will do. All right, awesome. Uh, with that, I think uh, I'll thank everybody and we'll talk to you hopefully we'll see many of you on uh, Monday and Tuesday yeah thanks Tom. I'm trying to make it <laughs> thanks guys okay bye-bye right. thank you bye. thank you thanks everyone bye, -bye. thanks